Hello and welcome. Let's look at the solution for number system quant proceeds that happened on 6th August. How many multiples of 32 are perfect squares less than 10 raised to the power 4? The key thing you need to understand here is that if it is a multiple of 32 and it is a perfect square, it is as good as saying the number is a multiple of 64 because 32 by itself is 2 raised to the power 5. And if it has to be a perfect square, the power has to be even. So the number has to be a multiple of 64. So first let us ascertain how many multiples of 64 are there under 10 raised to the power four. When you divide this, when you divide this, you will get one. So 64, 365, 320, 400. So seven point something, something. There are 157 multiples of 64. There are 157 multiples of 64 under 10 raised to the power 4. And among those 157 multiples, how many of them are perfect squares? Because essentially the sort of numbers we are looking for are 64 into 1, 64 into 4, 64 into 9 and so on. Up until 157, you will reach the square of 12. So answer to the first question will be 12. Next question, if A plus B is equal to C, where A, B, C are positive digits, a positive single digit integers, what is the greatest possible value of the product A, B, C? Okay, we want the greatest possible value of the product A, B, C. For the product to be maximum, we would want as large number as possible, as large a number as possible. So the best case would be if C was equal to nine, if C was equal to nine, and now A and B, A and B, they add up to nine and their product has to be large and they have to be single digit integers. The best case would be when they are as close together as possible, four and five. So when you multiply them, you get four into five into nine or the answer to the question will be option C, 180. Next, which of the following must be true for three positive consecutive integers? The product is always divisible by six. Their sum is always divisible by three. The product is always divisible by four. Okay, when you take three positive consecutive integers, their product will always be, or let's say not three positive, n positive consecutive integers, it will always be divisible by n factorial and it will always be divisible by n. It will always be divisible by n. Okay, so when they say that product is divisible by six, I know n uh, six to be, I know six to be a three factorial number. So three positive integers, yes, this is true. Their sum is always divisible by three. Why this would happen is all, all families of three will get represented once. So if you add these up, if you add these up, of course you will get a multiple of three. So this is also true. The product is always divisible by four. This is not necessarily true. Let's say we take the most basic case, one, two, three, the product will be six, which is not divisible by four. So this is not always true. Answer has to be one and two. In fact, even if you had not engaged in any insightful things, you had only taken up the first three numbers, one, two, three, you could have reached the answer here. Let A, B, C be positive integers satisfying A is less than B is less than C. Okay. So the first thing I get from here is all three of them have to be distinct. And A plus B plus C have to be equal to X. What is the smallest value of X that does not determine A, B, C uniquely? Okay. So the smallest case that I can think of are one, two, three positive integers, one, two, three. So when I add these up, I get six. So let me try the next case. Six is not the answer. For sum as six, I will get a unique value of A, B, and C. When we have the summation of seven, now I have to add a seven to one of these three variables. I have to add, uh, I have to add a one to one of these three variables. Can I add it to two? No, it would become equal to three. Can I add it to one? No, it would become equal to two. So the only place I can give that additional one is at the third place. And this will also be a unique situation. A, B, C can be uniquely determined. So seven wouldn't work. But when I get to eight, now see the beautiful situation. I shouldn't have written one, but can you give an additional one to four, which would lead us to the case one plus two plus five, or you can also give the additional one to two, which would lead us to the case one plus three plus four equal to it. So can we identify uniquely A, B, and C? Not really. We have two solution sets available for them. One point of contention that people usually have for this question is, but a key value to uniquely, 
we don't care for individual value of variable we are looking for the set of values for a b and c can you uniquely identify for all three variables can you uniquely identify we will get uh, flustered even if it is it so the answer to the question has to be d next if in a number system 40132 corresponds to 2542 in decimals find the base of the number system okay now for any number system the unit digit the unit digit represents the remainder with the base when we are even when we are operating in base 10 let's say the number was 2517 this 7 represents remainder with 10 so when i have 2 here in whatever base basically we are saying the remainder with the base is 2 remainder with the base is 2 so one by one i will go through every option i don't want to engage in maths one by one i will go through every option and see wherever i get remainder as 2 those options will survive with 5 do i get remainder 2 here yes this survives that does not make 5 as the final answer that makes 5 survive let's look at 6 this number upon division by 6 what remainder will it give 2 2400 gone 120 gone 22 left it leaves a remainder of 4 upon division by 6 so this is not possible let's look at remainder with 7 2100 gone 420 gone 22 is left 22 leaves a remainder of 1 with 7 so this is not the possible base let's look at remainder with 8 2400 is gone 136 is gone 6 is left remainder with 8 is 6 here this is also not possible and now because 6 7 8 all have been ruled out the only possible answer is a or 5 that has to be the final answer because that is the only one that survives this through to me next let d be a chemical decimal of the form d is equal to a b c d a b c d first of all we know d is equal to a b c d by 9999 nine, nine, nine. okay it might get cancelled in future but a b c d by 9999 nine, 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 straight away we know we know how to convert recurring decimal numbers to fractions hopefully where the digits a b c d are integers lying between 0 and 9 at most three of these digits are 0 cool by which of the following numbers should d be multiplied so that the result is a natural number okay if i have to multiply it with something so that the result is a natural number this number that i'm multiplying it by should be a multiple of 9999 so that the denominator goes away entirely this is not a multiple of 9999 this is not a multiple of 9999 this is 9999 into 5 10,000 into 5 minus 5. So, yes. And this is not a multiple of 9999. Answer has to be C. Next, find the last two digits of 25 raised to the power 63 into 63 raised to the power 25. Okay. The answer has to be B. This is perhaps the easiest question in the entire set. Given that it is 5 raised to a very large power, given that it is 5 raised to uh, 25 raised to a very large power, the number has to be a multiple of 25 and multiples of 25 only end in the following digits. These are the only possible uh, last two digits for numbers ending with uh, uh, or which are multiple of 25. So 85, 55, 45, all of them are eliminated. 75 is the only possible case. That has to be the answer. Next, if ABC is a three digit whole number such that ABC is equal to AQ plus BQ plus CQ, wherein ABC lies in the range 300 to 400, find the sum of A, B, and C. Okay, this question uh, can be done. If you don't know the concept of Armstrong numbers, then great, not a problem. But if you do know Armstrong numbers, then that question would have been a cakewalk. Matlab, Armstrong number mein janne ke liye bas itna hi janna yaar. Matlab, <laughs> saste wale game mein, there is 153 which is equal to one cube plus five cube plus three cube. And the next Armstrong number is 370, which is three cube plus seven cube plus uh, zero cube. The next Armstrong number is 371, which is three cube plus seven cube plus one cube. Hopefully you can see within the range specified, you are getting two cases. So what is the sum of ABC? Answer has to be data insufficient. Now working with the idea that we did not know this. We did not know this. Okay. Given that cubes are going in this range, given that cubes are going in this range, what, what cube number lies within this range? Can I get it with six cube and five cube? Six cube is two, one, six, five cube is one, two, five. But what, when I add these up, how much do I go? Uh, 
two one six plus one two five comes up with three four one. We have already got three four one, and I have to make sure that this reaches the range of sixties at least. This reaches the range of sixties at least. In fact, the only possible number that we can go to would be three sixty five. The only possible number because I have to necessarily include digit six. I have to necessarily include digit five. The only possible number I can go to is three six five, or even if you are being a little generous, let's go to three five six. Can you see the difference between these two numbers or these two numbers? Here you have the difference of twenty four. Here you have the difference of fifteen. Neither of these numbers are perfect squares, which would mean I can't work with six and five. Uh, as a grouping in the number with six and four, I will not even breach the barrier of three hundred, so that is not possible. With five and four, I will not breach the barrier of three hundred, which is not possible. So we know for certain seven cube is definitely one of the numbers that we are using. Also, because ABC lies in the range three hundred to four hundred, can we be certain three is also definitely a number that we are using? Three hundred, three cube plus seven cube, plus some other digit we have to work with. So first, let's just find out the summation of these numbers. This is three seventy. Seven cube is three forty three. Three cube is twenty seven. So we add them up. We get to three seventy. So now the third digit, if I keep it as zero cube, life is chill. Now in the same vein, if I keep it as one cube, life would be chill. So you will still get two cases with seven cube, three cube, and zero cube, or seven cube, three cube, and one cube. In either case. Uh, or just because there are two cases you can come to the conclusion data has to be insufficient next find the smallest value of x such that x factorial ends with 23 zeros okay uh, the first thing you should be able to see here is 98 and 90 99 and 98 factorial will end with exactly the same number of zeros will end with exactly the same number of zeros so let's just check and in fact not just 98 99 98, 99, 97, 96, 95. Up until 95, everything will have the same number of zeros. So let's just calculate how many zeros will be there. 19 by 5, I get 3. So 95 factorial, or 95 to 99 factorial, all of them have 22 zeros. 19 plus 3. When we go to 100 factorial, we have got two extra fives. This will have. Twenty-four zeros at the end. So from when you do the switch from ninety-five factorial to hundred factorial, we you move from twenty-two zeros to twenty-four zeros. Therefore, the answer to this question is there is no such number that has exactly twenty-three zeros at the end. Last question: What is the number, the sum of whose factors is equal to this, this, and this? Okay, this is more a twist on you knowing the formula or the expression for uh, sum of factors. So how this expression comes into being is one plus thirteen plus thirteen square by thirteen minus one into one plus eleven plus eleven square plus eleven cube. By eleven minus one, and finally one plus five raised to the power one divided by five minus one. If you can rearrange the terms, you can happily see the denominator is twelve into ten into four. Yes, four eighty we are getting, and the numerator will also GP ka formula laga ke you would get the numerator. So basically, the number that we are dealing with, the actual number that we are dealing with, is thirteen square. Into eleven cube into five. This is the number. At this time, we should know. We should know uh, that the unit digit of the number has to be five. So this is not the right option. This is not the right option. Now the problem would translate into, oh my God, I have to multiply these huge numbers. Yes, you have to multiply these huge numbers. So one way that you can potentially save your work, one way you can is calculate the last uh, last two digits. If you could calculate. Uh, last two digits remainder with twenty five. If you could calculate, because see, last two digits here remainder with twenty five is five. Here remainder with twenty five is twenty. If you can calculate last two digits, then you can identify. Another thing you can do is you can see that the number has to be a multiple of eleven. Let's check if the remainder with eleven is the same or not. First, I will do it with twenty five. Then I'll do the work with eleven. Let's see remainder with twenty five. One one sixty nine leaves a remainder of minus six. Eleven cube is one three three one. So it leaves a remainder of six. 
and five is five. Cool. So I get uh, six into five is thirty. Thirty leaves the remainder of five. Minus six into five is minus thirty, which is minus five. So finally, I need a remainder of twenty with twenty-five, which will enable me to reach A as the right answer. The alternate way was checking it, checking the remainder with eleven. So let's see. I get five. Eight zero one five plus eight plus zero plus one is fourteen, and here what do I get? Five plus five plus two plus one, I get thirteen. So the difference is one. This number cannot possibly be divisible by eleven. This number cannot possibly be divisible by eleven because please leaving a remainder of one with eleven. I know my answer has to be divisible by eleven. So this has to be the answer. Okay, that will be all for the quant crusades of this week. Hopefully, the revival was good for you, and you solved the question questions and in an efficient manner. And this solution probably helped you. That will be all. Have fun. Okay, bye.